Amen, amen. Good afternoon, church. Thank you, worship team. And good afternoon, everyone. And um, it's indeed a wonderful Sunday. Officially, this is our first Sunday of uh, the summer of 2018. And um, it's quite uh, unusual because it was raining. And, uh, you know, don't get disappointed about the rain. Take it as a sprinkler of blessing coming from God, trying to warm us up before, you know, uh, the, the heat of the sun, right? Amen. Are we all excited? Amen. And, of course, we're all excited, and we would like to welcome back our mom and dad in the house. Welcome back, Pastor Jerry and Mama E. And we will be hearing from them uh, uh, later on. Uh, they have a lot of great news. Um, they'll be uh, sharing it with us later on this afternoon. Are you blessed? Amen. Um, everyone quiet. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it, uh, the, the, the preaching I'll be sharing, uh, the topic I'll be sharing this afternoon, it's quite special to me. And um, it's, I started uh, uh, having this, uh, this praise of, 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 of a word when I met with an individual, when we're um, uh, counseling someone, and that word just keep on uh, um, um, speaking to my heart and speaking to me personally, and I start writing about it. And every time I try to finish it and about to preach something, the Lord says, it's not yet the time. It's not yet the time. Then another opportunity comes. It's not yet the time. It's not yet the time. And uh, I guess this is the time. So uh, it's been around six months. And for those who've been praying for me, thank you. Uh, I, I was... I lost my voice this morning, and I'm praising God for having it back. Thank you for worshiping. E every time we shout for joy and singing and worshiping the Lord, he will bless us with wonderful things. Amen. And I got my voice back. So <coughs> so how many are, are you today feeling tired, exhausted? Are you weary, worn out, fatigued, sap, burnt out, or Dog tired, spent, drained, prostrate, enervated, done in, beat, ready to drop, exhausted, or simply being tired. This perhaps be the tired era or the tired generation. We are running to and fro, and from early morning as soon as we wake up to the late night, there are so many things to do and yet not enough time to do them all. Mankind used to go to bed when the sun set. Anyone who experienced that? Probably only a few. Mankind used to go to bed when the sun set. Now with the electricity and with all the convenience, we stay up late at night. And even the TV shows have a show called Late Night or even Late Late Night Show, right? Uh, for those who really want to stay up late. We also have social media wherein everyone are hooked up and spend many long hours Right? Is that true? A lot of people are spending many long hours facing the book on Facebook, hoping to do instant thing via Instagram, right? We all have 24 hours in a day, and since we are in a fast pace, in a fast environment, trying to document everything in a snap via Snapchat, right? Exhausting all our energy. Playing virtual games like Games of Thrones, Sling Cars, or League of Legends, right? Anyone can relate? Yet, we still have to get up early for work or school. No wonder we are all, we are all tired and exhausted, right? It says here in many survey, people say that they wish they had more free time or more time they wish they could just sit around and do nothing for a while and just sleep in. Yet, even when we get time off, we fill it with so many things, right? We fill it with so many things. We, we put ourselves busy. Things that do often when we come back for vacation, we are just tired, weary, drained, exhausted. It's not more so than when, when we left. In our lives, there seems to be more to do, right? 
than time to do it in. How often have you made a list for each day and not been able to finish everything? We're listing a lot of things. And we're not able to finish everything that you set out to do. My question for us will be, how did we come up with those lists and prioritizing it in the first place? Next will be, at what point do we stop pushing ourselves to complete it all, becoming exhausted? When you go past the point of being at peace and feel tired, still try to accomplish things, and then exhaustion sets in. The activity you're trying to complete are no longer as productive, and due to the way you feel, most likely you will go home cranky and disappointed, right? Because we're not able to do all the things that we jot down, the things that we've list down. Perhaps the greatest problem, however, is not the tiredness of our body, but the tired souls. Again, perhaps the greatest problem, however, is not the tiredness of our body, but our tired souls. We have grown tired as a nation over evil in our land, over corruption and terrorism, left unchecked, over the constant themes of poverty and disease and brutality. We have grown weary of unchanging face of sin, of evildoers getting away with their deeds. We have become cynics about nearly everything from, from politics uh, to the job or even with, with religion, right? Our families suffer from tiredness of soul. Children grow up neglected or hurt from broken homes. Parents try to fill in their lives with, with business and extended work hours to make themselves believe they have something important to live for or to make more money. Teens don't have direction in their lives and they don't see anything to live for except materialism. We are a tired nation indeed, living in both physical and soulish exhaustion. But the good news is that God has an invitation. There's a good news. God has an invitation to come and rest. Amen? That's why the title of my message this afternoon, it's been quite a while when I was praying about it. Lord, help me to finish it. I started writing and reading about Psalm 46, and now I ended up with Matthew 11, 28, 30. God is so good. And my title of, uh, for uh, this afternoon is, Are You Exhausted or Jesus Exalted? It will be taken from Matthew 11, 28 to 30. The Bible teaches us that there is rest for the soul. Even when life gets hectic, busy, chaotic, and turbulent, this rest is deep and refreshing and satisfies. Church, are you exhausted? Come and rest in Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand as we read the word. Hallelujah. Matthew eleven twenty eight. To 30, it says, Come to me, all who you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you, Lord, for your word, O oh Lord. Lord, indeed, O oh Lord, we are blessed, O oh Lord, with your word. Lord, bless your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all be seated. Are you exhausted? Come, rest in Jesus. Rest for exhausted. It says on uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. The great secret of finding rest that even human soul longs for is found in these three words of Jesus' invitation. Come to me. It's three words. Come to me. Come to me. Jesus doesn't mess around with truth and what each soul needs. He simply declares that if you are to find rest for your needs, for your soul, there is only one place to get it. There's only one place. 
he simply declares that if you are to find rest for your soul, the one place is not just from him, but in him. Again, not just from him, but in him. So that's the source. That's the source when our rest for the exhausted, the source is Jesus. Not just from him, but in him alone. Jesus identifies no other source for the rest other than in him. The world tries to find this rest in so many other places. They build big buildings, hotels, resort. They use sports events. They go to vacation. They, they seek out philosophies. They seek out strange and wild religion and meditations. They seek out a cult. They seek out pleasure from from different variety of sins and immorality. Yet nothing in this world, yet nothing in this world has provided the rest for the soul except Jesus. Amen? Except Jesus. One of the French king built himself a place, a palace that he called Saint Souci. It's spelled S-A-N-S-S-O-U-C-I. I pronounce Saint Souci, and uh, which means without care, without worry. But the king soon discovered that he could not close out cares and worries of the state when he arrived in an enclosed and en- enclosed enclave because he carried them in his heart and mind. The soul cannot find rest in the things of this world. It can only be found in Christ. An eternal soul needs something eternal to rest in. If you are running around looking for relief for this world, burdens and trial, you won't find it. You won't find it here. You won't. You're just going to be disappointed. If you are truly tired of running around, trying to find rest for, the, for your heart, trying to find rest for your heart and your mind, look no farther. Jesus is here now. He is here, and he's making an invitation for you, for you and me, to come now to him for a real rest. So now we we know the source. If we are exhausted, we need to come and rest in Jesus. Source, now we go to the security, because there is security in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight says again, Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All you are weary and burdened, well, that's about covers everything, right? And I will give you rest. There is no question about what you receive when you come to Christ. It is rest. R-E-S-T. Rest. Just so you don't get the wrong idea, however, Christ is not offering offering a life without trials and difficulties. Yes, struggles is real. We heard a lot of preaching, a lot of sermon about our struggles in life. Right? Struggles is real. But he does offer security of the soul no matter how bad things get or how difficult they are. This word translated rest in, in Greek as anaposis, not kataposis. Uh, it's better translated as relief. R-E-L-I-E-F, relief. It is not therefore a life free from pain or struggle or sorrow. It is a security from being overwhelmed by life struggles. And, and in this sense, it's a rest from heaviness. A rest from heaviness. In Christ, there is security that cannot be found in the world. As Christians, we are crippled or crushed by events that come and go in our lives. Even the most tragic events cannot break the spirit when we abide in Christ. Amen? This is the security of Christ, offer of rest. In him we have purpose, and in him we know that all things work for good. Amen? In him we have we have purpose, and in him we know all things work for good. Even the most per- per- uh, perplexing events in life that cannot never be explained or understood cannot rob us 
of the rest we find in Jesus alone. In this world, no matter where you try to find it, there is no rest that you can get except from Jesus. Even just going to church won't bring it either. Right? You must set your soul on Christ, Jesus alone. Jesus himself says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is not a way as in one of many ways. He is not a way as one of many ways. He is the way. He is the way as the one and only way. Jesus is the only way to heaven for several reasons. Jesus was chosen by God to be the Savior. Amen? That's why we're here. That's why we have this privilege and honor to worship and praise him. Amen? When I was doing my research, I uh, uh, caught up with an article written by uh, Reverend Dennis Marquand. Um, he quoted a source that it was unknown, and a story, uh, an illustration he presented in one of his preaching. And it caught my attention because he gave an example about the Philippines. So it says here, in the Philippines, a local pastor shared this story. The driver of a carabao, everyone still remember a carabao? The driver of a carabao wagon was on his way to market when he overtook an old man carrying a heavy load. Taking compassion on him, the driver invited the old man to ride in the wagon. Gratefully, the old man accepted. After a few minutes, the driver turned to see how the old man was doing. To his surprise, take note of this, he found the old man still straining under the heavy loads. For he had not put it down from his shoulder. Still straining it, carrying it. While he was on board, he's, he still carried the weight on his shoulder. How many people jump on board? How many people jump on board a church and become part of it? And yet never really rest in Jesus. And never lay their burdens down. Does it, does it speak to us? Right? Christ over here uh, has no maybe. When he say, come to me, come and rest, there is no maybe. It is certain that if we trust in Christ, our soul find rest. That's guaranteed. If we can find relief and peace in Christ, while things, while things in this world offer temporary peace or some physical rest, nothing will satisfy your soul except God. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Rest for the exhausted. We know the source and the security. In him alone, in Jesus. Are you exhausted? Come and rest in Jesus. Rest for the labor. Rest for the laborers or the workers. Matthew 11, 28. 20, uh, Matthew 11, 29 to 30. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble heart in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Jesus now is trying to explain the secret to finding real rest, real rest in him. The secret is to rest. The secret is to rest is not inactivity. It is right activities. Take note of this. The secret to rest is not inactivity. It is right activities. Jesus didn't say quit working, quit serving. He said to put his yoke on so we will head in the right direction. And when it gets tough, he can do the heavy work and pulling. Amen. I found another illustration from an unknown source. It says, the concept here was familiar to the least century people, to the first century people. Who are the first century people? No one here anymore. <laughs> a young bull was always yoked to an older, stronger bull. 
and the stronger bull will keep the younger one from straying. And he would also bear most of the burden while the young one learned to pull the plow. If the younger one gets tired, the older one did most of the work. And being yoked together, yet the younger one could not stray. It was in this way that the yoke was easy and the burden is light. If we are yoked with Christ, it is the same with us. And since Christ is working, we should be too. But we can be sure that his yoke is easier than this world. Amen? His, his yoke is easier than this world. From that itself, Jesus invites us to learn from him. Say the word from the person next to you. Learn from him. Learn from him. From whom? From Jesus, right? You need to learn from Jesus. Because Jesus invites, invites us to learn from him. He was not inactive, but he sure wasn't overwhelmed either. All right? He drew his strength and peace from his father, and we are to draw ours from him. We need to draw ours from him. Have you seen Jesus worry? Jesus did not worry. Not once do we read that he was worried and anxious about anything. In fact, I'm, I'm guilty with this, and that speaks aloud to me personally. In fact, worry only makes matter worse. It's not good for us. I've been worrying a lot. I'm, I'm one of them. But praise God. Praise God for his grace, for his mercy, for his teaching that we've learned not to worry but to rely on him, alone, in him. Amen? This is why Jesus also said, be anxious for nothing. Right? The United States Public Health Service issued the following statement some time ago about the tendency of worry to shorten life. Do you believe that? <laughs> it, 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 it reads in part, so far as is known, no bird ever tried to build more nests than its neighbor. No fox ever fretted because it only had one hole in which to hide. No squirrel ever died of anxiety lest it should not lay aside enough for two winters instead of one, and no dog ever lost any sleep over the fact that it had not enough bones laid aside for, for the declining years. That's true. Birds, they, they don't get up in the morning and worry about whether they will be able to find worms. Right? Worms for the day. How many dogs do you know that have had nervous breakdowns. Some dogs watch the news every night with their owner. I've been seeing that. Some dogs are actually watching news with their owner and never once fretted over life. They never once, once fretted over life. E ever seen an animal in the forest call a meeting to see how they are all doing and how they're going to make it for the next week? No one. We are called upon by Christ to learn from him. How did he handle everything in life? Do you want to know how you handle life? Learn from him. This is what he did. He prayed and trusted in his father for everything. And now, we need to put our trust in him. Amen? He did whatever he could each day and did not fret over tomorrow. He didn't even worry about tomorrow. With us, we, we're not even enjoying today, and we're already worried about tomorrow. Wha what am I going to do tomorrow? Oh, it's going to work again tomorrow. I'm going to be at work again tomorrow. Can't we find work as a blessing? Can't we see work as an opportunity for us to bless others? We try to overthink and put a lot of worries in our, and, and create all those different stories instead of entrusting everything to the Lord. Lord, you know, bless me, Lord. As soon as we, we open our eyes, Lord, I will receive your blessing. I will, I will hold on to it 
and, and I will release it every time I, I, I step and, 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 and every time I go to work, meeting new people, meeting my, my co-workers, my office mates. Be that channel of blessing and trust everything. Don't worry even about the traffic along DDP, right? Because the more you worry, the more you might be late or even caught up in an accident, right? We worry a lot. And Christ focuses energy on relationships, not things. Our world now today, it's funny. Every morning as going to work, seeing people rushing, running, holding their cell phone. How many times have you dined with, with your families, with your friends? Everyone holding their gadgets, right? What about the relationships? We want to learn from Jesus. He's teaching us about relationships. He looked each day for what he might give, not what he got. He valued spiritual realities far above the things of this world. He sought to forgive, to love, to be patient, to heal. Those are the things that we should learn from him. Why call the yoke? Because it opposes our corrupt nature. Because it opposes the maxims of this world. Because it's repugnant to the schemes of men. Something which Christian is to, to be taught, learn of me. Learn of me. Learn from him. Learn from Jesus. His meekness, his humility, because Christ teaches by the Spirit, because Christ teaches by his word and by his example. John Newton says the happy effects of bearing this yoke rest to the soul. These afford the best and most unshaken evidence that he has begun a good work of grace in our hearts. Christ yoked his father's will. Not his will, but his father's will. The work given him to do all involved his sonships. Seeking and saving the lost, redemption of the world from sin, winning the world's heart for God. Church, if we just live and, and pattern ourselves after Christ, our life will be very restful. We won't be even exhausted. That word won't even exist. If we pattern ourselves to Christ, our life will be very restful. So the secret, rest for the exhausted, source and security. Are you exhausted still? Come and rest in Jesus. Rest for the laborers. Secret, now spiritual. 11, 29 to 30, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus clearly identifying, identified the kind of rest he is speaking about for you, that you will find rest for your souls. It is not a rest from activity or planning. Take note of that. It's, it is not a rest of all the activities or planning or even hard work. It is a rest for the soul amidst all the good and bad of life, all the activity and trials, the joy and the pain. Jesus explained what he is like. I am gentle and humble in heart. This is how we should pattern our lives. He is gentle in that. He's sick. You know, he's sick to harm no one. He is not one to, to, to hurt or even condemn. His gentleness, his gentleness is demonstrated in, in how patient he is with us, right? How patient he is with sinners and even with saints. We don't obey him. 
And his patience is marvelous. Even though we don't obey him, his patience is marvelous. His humility puts others ahead of self. He did not come to be served, but to serve others. This is hardly the mentality of the world because it is spiritual in essence. And thus the world does not grasp it. The world offers different things, right? Rest cannot come if we don't pattern ourselves after Christ in these two ways. People are demanding and most of the time angry or who act superior to others and, 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 and so have a demanding spirit, right? And many times frustrated and tired people, a lot of tired people here on earth, we cannot escape a yoke. We cannot escape a yoke. We will and we must choose one. What are you yoked to? When I was writing that question, I, I can't even find anything sense about it. But Lord, what are you yoked to? Is it a career? Is it a lifestyle? An organization? Or is it Christ? Right? The only yoke that is not too heavy, that is not even too heavy to bear, is the one that is connected to Christ. Church, if you want to find relief, a while ago I spelled relief, R R E L I I E F, but it should be spelled this way. It's a six letter word, right? It should be spelled C H R I S T. Come on, spelled it. C H R I S T. If you want relief, that's Christ. That's how you spelled relief. Remember the meaning of the Greek word for rest is relief? Those that walk with God never lose their ways. They can't when they are yoked to him. Hebrews 12, 26, 28 says, in these last days, the Bible says, once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. The world the words once more indicated the removing of what can be shaken that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. Do you know what is unshakable to yoke yourselves to? His yoke is easy, his burden is light. He is unshakable in his kingdom. Amen? Years ago, a German naturalist experienced his first earthquake. Everyone experienced earthquake? I've experienced a lot of earthquakes, especially in the Philippines. I uh, got stranded for over an hour. N then uh, we drove again. Then an, uh, 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 a big rock fell over. Then it created an, uh, a small avalanche. Then we got stuck there for almost a day. And uh, it scares me to death. And the good thing we have, you know, we have Christ um, uh, protecting us. And um, this can relate to me. Years ago, he said, the German naturalist experienced his first earthquake. The house he was in, in began to crack and fall apart around him. So he fled outside to another house, only to have it start falling apart around him also. Lifting his eyes to the hills, he saw that they were also reeling and staggering like drunken men. It was useless to run to the hills. He then looked towards the sea, but there he saw a ship in the mud, its bare keel showing clearly for the water had fled. The ground under his feet was no place of safety as well. No matter where he looked, there was no safety. Just then, he happened to look up toward heaven and he noticed that it was unmoved it was the only thing that is not unmoved he looked to the sea he looked to the hills the place where he is standing everything is moving everything is shaking only the heavens were stable how true this is today there is nothing on earth that is truly stable nothing on earth that can yoke ourselves to, the to offer stability and relief only if we look heavenward do we see an unshakable Christ, right? 
Do we see an unshakable Christ? Church, we do have a choice, a light burden or a heavy one. Which one? Which one do you want? Only the fool chooses the heavy one, of course. So choose Christ. He invites you to come and rest in him. Do you want real rest? It is available. All you need to do is come. It is available. It's never hard to find. All we need to do is desire it and seek it, right? Why not accept Christ's invitation? What's hold us back? Why is it very difficult for us to do it? If we come and rest in Christ and accept his invitation, he is exalted, right? He is exalted. So what's the difference between exalted and exhausted? So when I am focused on myself, I become exhausted, right? I've been writing and, and, and studying about, about the topic. It took me a while because I'm focusing more on myself. I got caught up with, oh, it's, it's a good title, but I focus on that one, on myself, on my own strength. Are you exhausted or Jesus exalted? Instead of me coming to him and find rest, I try to do a lot of research, study, reading a lot of materials. From Psalm uh, 46, I, 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 I read Isaiah 40. And then I, I end up reading the whole book of John. I said, Lord, help me. Not until I come and rest in his shoulder. And he gave me a very short, powerful verse. Matthew 11. 28 to 30. Wow. I, it, it took me over six months. Because I didn't come and find rest. When I'm focused on myself, I become exhausted. However, when I focus on Christ, he become exalted. And I become energized. The difference, church, is focus. We are created to exalt the creator. We become, we become exhausted when we attempted to, to exalt anything else. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nation. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46, 10 to 11, right? If we are feeling exhausted, be still. Focus on Jesus and rest in the fortress of the Lord Almighty. Amen? Exalt his name and you will be revitalized. You want to be revitalized? Exalt his holy name. When we sing out our praises, when we worship him, shout to the Lord. I don't have voice this morning. I was so worried. I, I texted a lot of people to pray for me, please. I was saving my voice. But when I started singing and shouting and, 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 and singing, all my vocal cords are open, right? It was rested. A lot of people pray for me. That's all we need to do. We need to come and rest in Christ. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Are we pressured? Pressure to be like everyone else? You know, they're out there producing excellent content. Pressure to use our time wisely. Pressure to, to practice my writing. I was, I was pressured to practice my writing when I'm doing my preaching. And I'm doing it all wrong. Pressure to be better and better and better. I just started to come and rest and just do, did this. <laughs> My motivation may be misdirected, so selfish, so negligence of the glory of Christ. Have you experienced anything like that lately? 
Oh, thank God for His wonderful grace and abundant mercy. Praise God for His great glory and put our thoughts and desires back into the right perspective. One of the best ways to lose sight of Christ is to start replacing Him with other people, with other desires, other tasks, or even other goals. More pointedly, start exalting anything but Christ. Start exalting anything but Christ and all else in our lives fall out in the right perspective. We want that, right? It's so easy and light, but then again, we keep on doing the wrong thing, making the wrong choice. Hello? All he asks is come. It's, it's an open invitation for each one of us. The problem is, did we even open the invitation? Or are we saying, I'm not invited? No. He said, come and rest. The way he's saying it is not just an invitation. He's actually crying out to you, come and rest. The glory of Christ is the whole point here. My glory is not the point. Your glory is not the point. I find that I need to repeat those words to myself on a daily basis. When I was doing this, I was repeating it, repeating it. Lord, not my glory, but your glory. Lord, not our glory, but your glory. One more time. Your glory, my glory, is not the point. The, ex the exaltation of Christ Jesus is the whole point of living, moving, and breathing. If you want to find rest, the whole point of living, moving, and breathing is to exalt Christ. Why do we see easily forget it? Why could be running our why could be running our race with perseverance, keeping our eyes fixed on Christ? And whoops, in a drop of a small thought about how our lives work should look more like the other persons, which leads us to neglect. We neglect a lot of things. We neglect the gratitude. His blessing, which leaves us discouraged and defeated. And that is precisely where the enemy wants us. We're opening an opportunity for the enemy. The struggle with sin that endures within us is ongoing. Wrestling for the kingdom. Kingdom of self to prevail. Or is it his kingdom? That's why we feel weary. We feel tired. We feel exhausted. Remember the Israelites. They had wandered for 40 years. And the same thing with us now. The result of wandering, the, the idolatrous heart, is that we can may gain the world, but we will lose our soul because Christ's exaltation, our life purpose, is no longer our ultimate objective and longing. We don't long for him. But then again, we praise God for rescue, for his rescue and help found in hope in that cross, in that cross. When he died, we are not just saved. It took over our life, but then again, we don't want to, to, to make him our Lord, to rule our life. That's why we're, we're getting tired, we're weary, we're exhausted. We complain. And as Christian, our thoughts are to be filled with heavens. We are to stay focused on, on the one who is worthy of praise and adoration, whose kingdom is eternal, absolutely worth fighting for and working for in this life. The, ex the exaltation of Christ is the whole goal of our life. It should be the whole goal of your life, of the church, and all, all the creation. John the Baptist understood this when he responded in John 3, 22, 36 to his disciple asking him about Jesus baptizing people. I won't be reading everything, but it says we, we, we learn a lot of things from, from John when, teaches, when, when John teaches them. There are three important ways that Christ can be exalted. 
Jesus is, is exalted when we point direct people to him. Jesus is exalted when we point or direct people to him. John says, I am not the Christ in verse 28. Our lives should proclaim, I am not the Christ, only he is the wonderful Savior. When our eyes are fixed on Jesus and when we proclaim him with our lives and our words, he is greatly exalted. This is specially needed when accomplish good works. That's one who is above all might receive all the glory and honor. That's one of the ways that Christ can be exalted. Number two, Jesus is exalted when we rejoice in truth and believe. Whoever receives his testimonies, set his seal to this, that God is true. As it says on verse 33, Christ is exalted when we believe him. Our lives no longer our own when we trust Christ as our Savior. Therefore, our lives reflect him, his greatness, and his lordship. That's very important, his lordships. When we believe and are saved, we are living, breathing testimonies to the salvation of work of Christ and light in the dark to this perishing world. Our deepened trust in Christ during trials and, and, and wilderness season also exalt the name of Christ. The third one, Jesus is exalted when we proclaim the gospel. Are we proclaiming the gospel? Are we sharing his word? Are we sharing his goodness, his love, his compassion, his care? John give us a beautiful example of sharing the truth of Christ in the right perspective without questioning him. He shares the good news of Jesus because he is compelled by the glory and greatness of Christ. Are we doing the same? John must exalt Christ and rejoice greatly at the, bride, at, the bride, uh, at the bridegroom voice. May our joy in knowing Christ is revealing in his glory cause us to ex exalt him to others. Again, three important ways that Christ can be exalted. Jesus is exalted when we point direct people to him. Jesus is exalted when we rejoice in truth and believe. Jesus is exalted when we proclaim the gospel. Church, true joy and greatness are found in exaltation of Christ, not ourselves, not ourselves. Are you exhausted? Or is Jesus exalted? Can you turn the tired, the tiredness of your body, the tiredness that you feel, and turn it into inspired, tired to inspired? We can do that when we focus in him. Exhausted, yes. We might be exhausted, but yet pursuing. I still remember the, the one of, uh, the preaching, uh, I think it's Pastor Alex when he shared about uh, 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 Gideon and the 300. They are exhausted in the battle, but those 300, they pursue. Pre they, they, they pursue Christ. They pursue God. And, and even though they, they are tired and weary, when they, you know, try to get the water, they're still on, they, their focus is still there. They're determined to win, right? Sometimes in our life, we are exhausted, but when we are exhausted, we stop. We tend to, oh, I'm just going to rest for now. But instead, we need to continue. We need to pursue. We need to continue pursuing him. Church, there is a deeper rest than physical rest. You can be quiet, active, and still find rest in Christ. May I call the worship team? People today are tired. Yes, people today are tired. There, there is an exhaustion of the soul that can only be refreshed in Christ. Jesus' invitation is very clear. Come to me, 
all you are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. How tired are you? And have you discovered God's invitation to come and find real rest? The invitation is a good one, right? Glorious great God, how majestic in your name. In all the earth, you do redeem children's lives to praise you and bring you glory all the days of our lives. Hallelujah. May we practice, Lord, for eternity by always pointing to your greatness. Lord, humble us to the areas of our lives where we exalt ourselves, Lord. We confess we take our eyes off Christ's glory. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. Let your name be exalted. Are you exhausted? Are you tired of being Christian? At some point, probably I am. I think almost all of us have experienced that feeling when all you want is just to give up and throw the towel. There are some instances in, in, in our Christian life when everything seems not to make any sense. You try your best to understand why things are happening the way it is. Whether you are suffering from health problems, persecution, trials, and challenges, there is no doubt that we tend to feel exhausted, just want to quit, throw the towel, raise the white flag. In times like this, what must be our attitude? What attitude should we, you know, do? Should we really take heed the voice of the back of our head, the back of our mind, and grab the opportunity to give up? It's easy to, to give up. It's very easy to give up. Should we just give in and, and every ounce of being is shouting, I had enough. I had enough. Are we forgetting about the invitation? Come and rest. Come and rest. Though it may be sound absurd, but being tired is a good sign. If we just, you know, aligning ourselves to Christ. A Christian life is not a life of comfort, but a life of overcoming, a life of a champion. If you are a Christian and you feel like nothing is challenging you or challenging your faith, then it's time for you to reconsider the path you are taking. You might be in the wrong direction. A Christian life is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. Being tired, exhausted means you are struggling. Being tired, exhausted means you are fighting. Yes, it is a sign of exhaustion, but it's also a sign of courage. It's also a sign of faith. It's also a sign of zeal. Being tired, exhausted, will only become a problem the moment you decide to give up. Don't equate being tired to giving up. They are not the same. Again, they are not the same. If you're tired, Turn it into inspired. Focus in him. Focus your faith in him, not focusing our frustration. Because if we focus on frustration, we get tired. We give up. But then again, Christ is there for us. An open invitation to come and rest so that we have a life of endurance. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master said, he who endures to the end will save. Paul even supported Jesus' statement by saying, we must, through must, we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, there is no doubt that if we are going to follow Christ, we are expected to deny ourselves. And I know it's not easy to den deny ourselves and take up our own cross. Those who seek to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their lives for Jesus sake will find it do you want to find rest do you find do you want to find real rest all we need to do is come come
Don't give up. Let's all stand. Again, a Christian life is not a sprint, but it's a marathon. It's a race of endurance, and it's perfectly normal to get tired. It is undeniable that being tired is a typical part of Christian race. However, there is no second prize in the Christian race. There is no second prize. It is either you finish it or not. And it's certain that those who give up will never be able to finish the race set before them. We must all remember that the prize of the Christian race is never given at the beginning. No one is rewarded because they have started the race. You will only be given the crown of righteousness when you finally cross the finish line. Church, this is an open invitation. God is calling you. If you're tired, if you're exhausted, come and rest so that Christ will be exalted.